One thing I've noticed is the only type of women that aren't allowed to actually be pretty and confident and pretty are light-skinned women specifically. You can be Hispanic and pretty, white and pretty, Asian and pretty, and nobody really gives you a hard time as much as the lighter-skinned black woman who is pretty. And I'm trying to figure out what it is. So one thing that I have noticed about black passing exoticals is we get the most hate from people. And I think it's just because we benefit from privileges while simultaneously being black that some unambiguous black people can't benefit from. If you're lighter skinned black, you know what I'm saying? You are going to move in the world different than your darker skin counterpart features play a part too and how people perceive you i notice if you have more afrocentric features i know that you don't even get called attractive like tiny and uh hazily and hazily is not ugly to me but because she has afrocentric features and she gets called ugly a lot of the times i think featureism is bigger than colorism I'm not thinking about all the light brights that get called ugly. and But they're light brights, though. But because of their Afrocentric features, which is crazy in itself, that Afrocentric features makes you ugly. That in itself is a projection from people who are saying that. They're literally saying that your African features make you look ugly. If you didn't have those African features, you wouldn't be... We wouldn't be calling you ugly. If Tiny had the same features as Tyler, I'm pretty sure she wouldn't get the same flack or ice spice because she has the same other phenotypes of ice spice so i feel like if she had ice spices features she wouldn't get called ugly but the two get one tiny gets called ugly ice spice gets called pretty i wonder why they're the same skin complexion i think they're the same phenotype similarly but i think it's bigger i think it's needs to be talked about more futurism it's kind of like one of those issues that people try to pretty much ignore um in this conversation a lot i know it's being talked about more and more but i feel like that really plays a part in how people perceive how you look and your skin complexion and all of that but i know there's people give grace to white passing exoticals but when it comes to the black passing ones it's like they can project onto us because we're in close proximity to them but we simultaneously benefit from other things like colorism and featureism and texturism what have you you know usually be as as exotical you benefit from one or the other more than one or at least one of the isms excuse me at least one of the isms i benefit from colorism and featureism i have type four it's kind of a 4b 4c mix it seems like i got two different it seems like the back is 4c and the top is like 4b mixed with 4a even like a, in the corner i have a mixture so but my hair is gets so dry like i've been natural at least three times in my life i have a, a relaxer right now but when i was natural i would try to find products for my hair type and it's it's a, it's like really hard to find even stuff that is organic I don't know, I tried to even find a hairstylist that could do natural hair, and she told me to get a perm. <laughs> and that's not the first hairstylist to tell me that because my hair type is just, it stays so dry. And I want to be natural so bad, but I just can't find the products. I just can't. And unless somebody can recommend me something that will keep my hair from drying all the time, I really don't have a choice but to relax and so they could come up with a product for our hair type somewhere. I wish I could invent something, but I don't know how to invent stuff. But hopefully one day we'll get a product for 4C hair with like the dry velocity. I don't know which high or low it is, but I ain't no hairstylist. I did cosmetology school in high school because they had, you know how you pick a elective and when you was in school? my school had a cosmetology program and I took it for two years it was a two-year program I if I chose that elective I had to take it for the two years and we even took board at this at school 
but I didn't pass for it. Hair just wasn't my thing. I just thought it would be a fun elective and learn how to do hair a little bit. We had fake mannequins. We got a whole, we had a whole kit, like a whole bunch of stuff that we got, like a hair kit full of combs and shampoos and stuff that we need to practice with our hair. And we only, the only black styles we learned was like how to braid. And that was the only time we had we used the black mannequins anything else we were learning it was a white school so it's not surprising but it is what it is but we learned how to cut hair and dye hair shampoo and all of the stuff so i know how to do white people here probably better than black people here because i only know how to corn roll for real and french braid because that's the only thing we did and we had to do like a hundred braids before we could pass or something so I we braid it all the time sometimes I would even stay after school and braid it was fun though it was a fun class I forgot why I was talking about this I'm just rambling right now but yeah but yeah I feel like black or black passing exoticals just get picked on because of our proximity and people project onto us simple as that like how dare you also be black like me but you benefit from privileges and I don't that's what it kind of gives for real i mean because what else is it we're especially monoracial exoticals like myself who aren't mixed race who are just black just like you i'm what 90 percent black and 10 i think i'm uh seven percent native two percent white something like that and then, you know, my 90% has a bunch of stuff like uh, Zulu, Cameroon, and stuff like that. Apparently, I got the white part of me is uh, Irish, and they say the Netherlands. <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't even know. But that's like 2%, so I don't even count that. But my phenotype does because it shows in my phenotype my features like it, i swear if i didn't have type 4c hair you wouldn't even know i was that you probably would think i was at least mixed with something because i look like i mix especially when i have my hair and like straight with like my clippings or whatever sometimes i'll even you know curl my clippings i wear different styles but i only stick to clippings i don't like wigs i don't get how y'all do it and first of all it's hot second of all to, to install it and make it look right that takes all day doesn't it i ain't even got time for all that and then i want some people get it perm like installed and it stays on for like weeks i have to take my clippings out as soon as i get home at the end of the day because i'm not going to keep them in my hair because i got i need my hair to breathe and stuff i just don't I don't know i just can't do it more power to the girlies who like wigs i just i tried them i tried them i have a wig sitting in my my room right now that i just wasted money on because i just i wanted to try a wig and see how it what's the hype about i'm just not a wig girl <laughs> but yeah y'all um let me know what y'all think about how do y'all feel about do y'all notice the difference how black exoticals black passing exoticals get treated especially monoracial and especially if you're the only exotical monoracial in the family you stick out like a sore thumb people treat you different i mean and it's not your fault first of all but people just uh not pedestalize you but they uh what's the word i'm looking for they uh uh obsess over you what's the word i'm looking for um but y you know what i'm trying to say like they're like obsessed with our phenotype it's like how can you look it's genes how can you they're like how can you look like that and still be black like people always ask me what am i mixed with where am i from and when i tell them i'm just black they don't believe me they're like no what else is it what else is it so yeah so y'all yeah, know the whole situation happened with tyler at the vmas with holly bailey and Tyler passed in Holly Bailey the award or whatever because her arm was hurting. I remember looking at a picture of them and I was like, 
this is exactly because if you guys see the picture of them sit side by side tyler and Haley, or holly because they're friends apparently and they you see how similar their features look because y'all know i look like holly bailey in real life like my closest twin in hollywood is her and i saw her beside tyler and i was like the only thing that's different about them for real for real is their hair type they have the similar phenotypes a similar phenotype not, not exactly fe similar but when you look at them side by side they look like they could be sisters like as a matter of fact i think tyler has a half sister that's monoracial with a similar phenotype to holly if i'm not mistaken she looks similar i don't know but yeah i don't know what i'm saying we get confused with each other a lot so i i get i mean i get why monoracial blacks get hated on because we look mixed but we are still we still can claim being black and i guess people don't like that even from white women like i've noticed i get hate from them it's not just women in the black community it's not just women in the bl unambiguous black community it's white women too I've been getting hate on by white women lately. Um, and there's just one. No, there's not just one. I, I'm, not, I'm starting to believe it's all three female managers at my job. So one is white girl. One is like Hispanic looking. And the other one, she's actually maybe Blasian to me. And I feel like all three of them give me a hard time at work. And it's only the females. The men at my, the male managers, they don't give me a hard time. Like, for example, anytime, like the type of job I have, when we first come in, we're supposed to be getting assigned positions on what we're supposed to do for the entire day. And usually there's this position that's easier. There's like levels to each position. Like some is like lightweight and then some is like only men should be doing this. And on every anytime I go into work and those any of those three females are assigning, I notice they give me the hardest jobs. And I'm usually the only female in that department working, I notice. I'm like, why are they putting me in this? I try not to complain because I don't want to feel like they're I'm complaining. Cause I remember one time I tried to complain about a job I had to one of the females. The Blasian girl, and she just gave me this look. I mean, she's an exotical, but she... I guess you could call her a basic Betty. Um, she doesn't do the most. She doesn't really take care of her looks like that. She could have the potential to be very pretty. I mean, she's pretty to me, but she's like... You know what I'm saying? She's, she's okay pretty. She has the potential to be a bad bitch, you know, if she does a few things to herself, you know what I'm saying? And I think because I do come in all dolled up, mind you, this is like a graveyard shift. So I work like from like three in the, from like three in the morning to like 10 in the morning. It's like a weird ass hour, like midnight. So you don't have, people come in like in sweatpants and stuff and their hair is not done. But I come in with my hair done, with nice leggings, and we have to wear a safety vest. So my vest is always pink or purple, and I only wear the fitted vest. They have vests for females. For those females who work in warehouses, they make these fitted vests for the shape of a woman to shape you instead of the, the bulgy vest. And that's what I wear. I like to wear cute fitted clothes. Even my work boots are girlish as fuck. They're purple and pink. Who wears purple and pink steel toe boots? Oh, well, I do. And, you know, the I think the women, you know, peep this. Like, probably thinking, who does she think she is? I'm so used to people assuming, who do I think I am? And I'm bougie. That I wouldn't be surprised. So I feel like they always try to put me on, like, the most harshest assignments when I come in. And you would think the Blasian girl wouldn't give me a hard time. And she kind of low-key doesn't. 
But at the same time, she gives me weird energy vibes sometimes. Like, I don't know if she sees me as her... Because me and her are the same complexion. We have the similar eye shape. Like, I look like her, but she's... She gives blaze. She looks like she's actually blazing. Um, I'm monoracial, but I pass as mixed race. So we look similar, but she doesn't get the pretty privilege that I do. I don't know if she's because she's a manager. That's why. I don't know what the reason is. Why this girl, you would think she'd be one of my friends friends and she I noticed she'll try to interact with me sometimes like she'll ask me how old are you do you have any kids like she'll be trying to get to know me like that and stuff but sometimes she'll pay it I don't know if you guys know what pay it means but she'll sometimes just ignore me like we'll walk past each other she act like she don't see me but she'll talk to the people right beside me or near me but she won't speak to me I'm not trying to take it personal but it's like She's always giving me weird looks whenever I ask her questions, and she's just giving me very uncomfortable vibes. Like, I make her uncomfortable. I don't know. And I don't want to feel like I'm stuck up and I'm better than anybody because I'm not. People are acting like I'm better than them. It's not me projecting onto them. I'm very nice, and I treat everybody equally. You know, I don't treat anybody any different. So I don't get why. I always get the special treatment from one extreme to another if I'm getting princess treatment or I'm getting just straight hate treatment it's never in between it's some it's, if it's in between it's only with men men that are probably taken or happily taken and don't want to mess around with nobody else and just you know being my just being cool with me usually those are the guys that will be neutral with me but everybody else is going to be the hot or cold it's no in the middle it's either stalkers, stalker vibes, or hater vibes. It's If it's in between, it's either the person is gay or the person is, a, I'm not their type, but they still like me as a person. Or they're older. So I, I have a lot of older people that I, I associate with at work. Because, you know, the people my age, if they're female and they're black, they don't want to interact with me that much. Sometimes I feel like they try to hide from me or avoid me. Just, I don't know. I do feel like the black girls avoid me a lot. The unambiguous black girls avoid me all the time. Anytime a light skinned girl ever came to the job, me and her clicked right away. But they didn't last at the job very long. And I'm, I'm telling you, I noticed this as a pattern, even in my life as a child growing up. I only got along with lighter skinned women. So this Blasian girl is at, she's not light skinned, she's like a darker brown. Like I'm a shade lighter than her. Just to give you guys context. I'm a shade lighter than the Blasian woman. And you know, I thought me and her would at least be some type of cool, but because she's an exotical, you know, I only get I seem to only get along with exoticals. Any unambiguous friend I ever had. There was something, there was something about that friendship that just, I don't know, made me uncomfortable or they were on their, um, not insecure shit, but I don't know. I just, those relationships didn't ever work out for me. Um, or they would try to take my boyfriend or those are story times for another day, (laughs) but I don't know. I don't get it. I noticed when we had a Hispanic female that was at the job, she quit a couple months ago, but I remember she was just like me. Like when me and her saw each other, like we just instantly just had this connection because we both were those pretty, I guess you could call quote unquote bougie type of girls. Like we, we dressed up for work, even though we didn't have to, we were girlied up. Like she was like, my Hispanic twin of them, like, but she, she left, but nobody gave her a hard time, I noticed, nobody gave her a hard time about being extra girly at work, and pretty, but with me, I get it hard, I get hit hard, like, 
she got just as much attention as I did, but nobody, the unambiguous black women didn't give her a hard time like they did, like they do me. So, and I noticed when I did have a lighter skinned friend that was there, or, you know, me and this, we're still friends on Instagram to this day, me and this other light skinned friend. But I noticed when she first started working here, people would try to humble me with her. This one particular older lady always trying to humble me with backhanded shit. When my lighter skin friend was working with me, me and her would always be together talking. And I noticed people would see me and her talking in a gay, oh, she got a friend. Let me, let me sabotage this real quick. So the older lady would come up to us and she would overly compliment my friend, how pretty she is, how pretty she is. Every five seconds. It was almost cringy how she was doing it. Almost like she was trying to make me feel some type of way because she would never do it to me. But everybody else would do it to me. Everybody else would give me compliments at work except her and her clique, her unambiguous friends. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I know exactly what you're doing in my head as she's doing this. It, it gives very much humbling tactic. It gives very much, you're trying to humble me. Like, I can tell it's obvious. It's cringy how obvious this is. Like, thank you for letting me know how intimidated you are by me but yet you have to humble me like this in front of somebody make yourself look stupid i am not i play stupid but it's only because it's only so i can evaluate people's bullshit i like i played stupid in that situation i can like i didn't know what was going on but a part of me wanted to say something just to kind of check her like but i didn't i kept my you know i'm trying to be cool i don't want people to think they're getting to me because they didn't get into me, but they trying to get to me. And if I let them think they're getting to me, it's just not cool. But, yeah, I, I noticed this. I can't seem to befriend any of the biggest black women, even if I tried. There's sabotage coming my way. So I just can't do it. I've tried. I'll keep trying, but every time I try to make friends with unambiguous women, there's always a problem. Especially if they're in a relationship. Especially if they have a man. Don't, they're not going to bring that man around. And then that friendship, there's some strings attached somewhere. I just, I've never had a good relationship with an unambiguous black woman ever. I can truly say this. I'm trying to think of a friend who was legit my friend and didn't want nothing in return. I can only think of one girl from the army, but she, she had an inferiority complex also. And she would always talk about how light skinned I am. It was cringy, and I was like, I just couldn't do that energy anymore. Like, can we talk about other things other than color? And she would always talk about how her boyfriend is this, her boyfriend is that. She was one of those friends that always complained about her relationships and complained about things. And, you know, I don't like hanging around people who like to complain like that all the time. Almost using me to vent, almost. And then I felt like she would live vicariously through me sometimes. I don't know. But I notice if you're light-skinned and pretty and confident at the same time, women will give you hell for it. All, all races of women give me hell. This white lady the other day, I really tried not to let her get under my skin. She's a new manager here. She caught herself coming up to me talking about are you okay um they say you haven't been working lately mind you I've been working the entire time doing my job I'm like looking at this crazy bitch like what is she talking about and I only feel like she said something to me because when I when she for when the the day first started me and her were in the bathroom at the same time and she, when she came into the bathroom I was in the bathroom looking in the mirror trying to fix my hair and that type of energy is weird. When I'm looking in the mirror at myself, fixing myself up, and a woman walks in the bathroom, <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking. Who does she think she is? I don't know what the fuck they're thinking, but I noticed her energy for that whole day was just weird to me. Like, she was up, up my ass acting like I wasn't working or anything. Like, I wasn't working because you saw me in the mirror for five seconds. I had just got out the bathroom washing my hands. You just walked in the bathroom. You just saw me looking in the mirror. And you think I'm, I don't know what the fuck you're thinking. But I'm looking at the mirror because my hair is messed up right now. I'm trying to fix my hair. 
and this bitch gonna give me a hard time because of that. I'm trying not to come jump to conclusions, but the energy shift was just crazy. And like this white bitch better got my face. And she always has something to say about my hair too. That's one another thing that got me. The day before a couple of days before this, she will always have something to say about my hair. Oh, your hair's too long. You need to put it in the ponytail. Oh, uh, you need to do this. Yeah, you need to nitpicky shit with my hair and stuff. And my clothes and zip up your zip up your vest. Uh, uh. I'm like, okay. The men don't do none of this, mind you. The men managers don't do none of this. As a matter of fact, the yesterday when the one of the female managers put me in one of those man masculine positions that are heavy lifters, only heavy lifters should be in that position. One of the men who was already over there was like, girl, he assigned me to one of the managers over there was like assigning me to a softer position because he knew I shouldn't have been over there. He, she was like, he was like, why did she put you over here? I was like, I don't know. She always put me over here. She's always trying to put me over here. So, I don't know. <laughs> but it's like, I get sabotaged for being pretty. Other girls can be pretty, I notice, and they won't sabotage them if they're not black and pretty and light skinned at the same time. They probably won't get as much treat- mistreatment as me. It's very annoying. And I noticed this throughout me working here. A pretty girl would come and go, but yet I'm, like, other light-skinned women have came and gone. I don't know what their experiences were, but I know they're not working there anymore. Good for them. I know for me, I'm still here, and I'm trying to get out of here. I just, I don't have anything to fall. I don't have a plan B right now. YouTube is kind of slow. Patreon, I just started that. So hopefully that could get me out the up out of here soon but yeah um i just wanted to talk about that real quick um (laughs) i don't know what it is at least like everybody some men too if they're jealous type of men will give you a hard time i think a lot of men some men are jealous of lighter skinned women too i've heard that before (laughs) i don't know I, if a guy likes me and I'm not paying him enough attention, I notice he'll act weird with me. And it's very annoying and uncomfortable. Being a pretty girl, I'm trying to tell you, it's not for the weak. It's not for the weak. It's really not. Uh, people want pretty privilege, but. <laughs> but yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for listening.